Good morning, everybody. My name is Chris Coney, the host of the Cryptoverse, and welcome back. Welcome to today's episode. This is something that I've wanted to talk about for a while. It's been in my notes. I call this the impossible problem of crypto security. And rather than saying this is the problem, I'm putting it out there to see if anyone can solve it. So let's get into it. Another one of my trusty models has been created for this very purpose. So let's explain this in order. So let's begin in the center here. Let's go cryptocurrency. So anyone, we all have cryptocurrency, right? And we all store it in hardware wallets as that is currently the best possible solution for storing your private keys, right? So we all know what cryptocurrency is. No need to explain that. So let me just mark that one off as dealt with. Lovely. So we store the cryptocurrency in a hardware wallet. My hardware wallet of choice is a Ledger Nano S, soon to be a Ledger Nano X when it finally arrives. That's that one checked off. So we store the cryptocurrency in the hardware wallet. So that's great. That's the private key protected. But we need to back this up in case the hardware wallet fails or it gets stolen or so on. So we back it up via a recovery phrase, which is the standard practice for all cryptocurrency wallets of all kinds. <clears throat> they all have a 12 or 24 word recovery phrase. The ledger has a 24 word recovery phrase. So the hardware wallet is backed up via a recovery phrase. What that does though, is that it makes it physical, isn't it? So let me mark that one off, recovery phrase. And the recovery phrase then needs protecting somehow because possession of the recovery phrase is possession of the crypto because your recovery phrase can rebuild your private key and then spend your funds. So cryptocurrency in software, like in a software wallet, it remains virtual, but then, you know, it's, it's uh, on a hot computer connected to the internet that can then be stolen by a hacker. Putting it in a hardware wallet effectively moves the key offline so it can't be tampered with. But again, we have to back that up. So if you went, well, what's the best way of backing up your recovery phrase? It's not just the piece of cardboard that you get with a ledger wallet because it can catch fire, you know, it's perishable, all the all the traits of a physical item. So there are some extreme physical items you can use. So like recovery phrase here, it says backed up by a crypto tag, which is that hardware backup solution that I mentioned recently. It's titanium plates that comes with a punch kit and you stamp your recovery phrase onto the titanium plate, which makes it nigh on indestructible at that point. So I would consider a ledger wallet with the recovery phrase backed up on a crypto tag to be the best solution at present. The trouble is that now we're at crypto tag. Well, the crypto tag is a physical item as well, which requires physical protection. So what do you do about that? <clears throat> it can still be physically stolen. So you could put your crypto tag in a, you know, some people say bury it in the, in the back garden. Some people say store it in someone else's house. Some people say store it in a safe deposit box or a bank vault. So that's that part of the model right there. Let's tag that off. The point is it's physical though. So it has to go to a physical location, whether it's a safe deposit box in a bank or a private storage company or a friend's house. What that means though is that if you're storing it somewhere physically, um, if you store it yourself, you have the risk of it being stolen. If you put it in a bank vault, say, <clears throat> which is owned by a private storage company here on the far left, let's mark that one off, then you have a trust problem. So crypto tag, which has your recovery phrase in it, stored in safe deposit box or bank vault, that's owned by some private storage company who then has possession of the recovery phrase. So that's where it goes across the center there back to recovery phrase. Recovery phrase backed up by crypto tag, stored in the, <clears throat> in the safe deposit box or the bank vault, owned by a private company, and that requires trust. And this is the humdinger. The whole point about having crypto assets is that they're bearer assets that don't require any trust, right? Um, so this possession requires trust. And the private company who has the safe deposit box, you have to trust them. They have to trust them, A, not to confiscate it themselves, and B, <clears throat> it has that risk of, uh, because it's not in your possession, there's a third party that could be pressured by uh, you know, a government or an organized crime gang or something to release that to them. So you you end up going from, okay, let's let's keep it entirely 
uh, entirely digital then. You know, like a, a brain wallet would be where you memorize the recovery phrase. And that's probably the ideal solution because then it's not in the digital realm in terms of computers, and it's not in the physical realm in terms of being written on a piece of paper or a titanium plate or in a bank vault. But the risk there, and this is the other thing, it's all about where's the risk coming from. The risk there is that you forget it. It's not 100% reliable, that is it, in, in your memory. One day, you may come to re recall your recovery phrase that you've memorized, and you can't. And it's only at that point you realize that, oh, oh dear, I can't recall it. So then then that's your funds at risk, isn't it? So th this is really about trust and risk. You know, trust is if you entrust the recovery phrase to someone else, and risk is always there, whether it's risk of confiscation in a third party vault, whether it's risk of forgetting it in a brain wallet, or if it's at risk of uh, destruction of the private key or the recovery phrase, if it's on a piece of card or so on. So th this model is the, my current understanding of the whole thing. And that's why I call it the impossible problem. Because no matter how far back you go, private key, backup phrase, piece of paper, titanium, plates, uh, now where do you go? How do you protect that? And every time you go back a step and back up the backup and the backup, well, how do you back up the backup of the backup, you know? And you end up with the titanium plates, which are physically indestructible, but now how do you back that up? Where do you put it? And that just goes on and on and on and on and on. And you end up back in the old financial system of giving someone third party custody of your um, recovery phrase, you know? So there we jolly well go. Um, let me know in the comments below. This is a consultation. This is sort of the approach I'm taking now. It's a conversation. So what do you see any major flaw in this model? Where are the, where are the uh, solutions that I haven't thought of? Post them down in the comments for this episode so everybody can read them, including myself. And then I'll maybe do an update if there's a humdinger that I've missed. But that's all I wanted to say today. Thanks very much for joining me. Like the episode if you liked it. Hit the subscribe button if you want to see more of my content. And also, I do actually have a course called uh, Blockchain Security Essentials that contains everything, all the best strategies that I've got so far for protecting your cryptocurrency and making it almost impossible to steal. So check that out at my online school called Cryptoversity. You can find the link by going to thecryptoverse.show. And then there's a link there for courses. You can also support the show on Patreon and earn cryptocurrency rewards every time you watch an episode. So I'm not just asking you to give me money, there is a reward scheme involved in there as well. But that's all I've got for you today. I'll be back with the next episode of the Cryptoverse. So until then, it's me, Chris Coney saying bye for now.